So you're getting tired of constantly swapping SD cards to print something new, and you're looking for a way to remotely control your printer. You've also heard of this fancy new firmware called Clipper, and you want to give it a shot. So you go out, and you buy yourself a Raspberry Pi. And of course, you're going to have to hook that up to your printer with a USB cable. And don't forget, you need to power it. But now you have an extra plug in the wall, so you want, you want a cleaner setup. You want something that's fully internal. Well, your printer has a power supply. You can grab a buck converter of some sort. You get some wiring, some connectors, and hey, you might even need to solder as well. Oh, don't forget your crimper too. But what if I told you there was an even simpler solution and a cheaper solution? What if I told you all you really needed to add was a Raspberry Pi Zero and a single connector? So starting off, of course going with a full size Raspberry Pi is a completely valid option. It does have many advantages that this option unfortunately will be lacking in and we'll get into those details further. But the solution we're going to be looking at today is a great low cost option for those that simply want to be able to control their printers over their home wireless network. And for those doing small compact builds where prioritizing cable management and available space can be a benefit. So let's start off by taking a look at the Raspberry Pi Zero. So the Raspberry Pi Zero, for those that are unfamiliar, is the lowest cost option in the Raspberry Pi family. This is the Raspberry Pi Zero W, and you're going to want the W version because that one has the built-in Wi-Fi. And it's also the slowest of the Raspberry Pis. And it's not recommended that you run Octoprint on a Raspberry Pi Zero because it's so underpowered. So we're not going to do that. And what we will be doing is running a standalone clipper interface on the Raspberry Pi Zero. And this will let us negate the fact that this thing has a weaker processor. And another thing that makes this possible is the fact that the Raspberry Pi Zero with its low power draw enables you to power it off of most modern boards simply through an available 5 volt pin. Now there are a few things you have to keep in mind to make this work. And the first thing is you need to be using a controller board with available UART pins. Now on the SKR series of boards, the easiest solution is simply to use the TFT header on the board. So you have 5 volt ground TX and RX in one convenient package. You do need to ensure and keep in mind that your board has the ability to deliver the required power for the Raspberry Pi. However, since most modern boards are capable of powering standalone LCD screens, they should be okay. If you are worried, you can refer to your controller board's manufacturer to see if the board is capable of outputting the required amperage for Raspberry Pi Zero. Now, there are two downsides to this setup that you do have to keep in mind. The first thing is, since the Raspberry Pi Zero is a low power board, it doesn't have the raw power capable of handling most modern HD webcam streams. Unfortunately, that is a limitation of the encoder and there's really no way to get around that. You may be able to get by with a low power webcam running at a low resolution and frame rate. However, I do recommend simply running without a webcam. This will make sure that you don't run any issues with power draw or overtaxing your CPU midway through a print and having everything shut down. And unfortunately, another downside with this setup is since you will be using the TFT header, you unfortunately won't be able to connect a screen if it requires that connection. Now, depending on your controller board, you may have additional hookups that you can use for a controller screen. Now, the alternative is, of course, now that your printer can connect to the Wi-Fi and you can control it, you can simply control it from your phone as long as you're connected through your home Wi-Fi network over the web interface. So getting this set up is relatively simple. You just need to find on your board where the available TX, RX, 5 volt and ground connectors are. On your Raspberry Pi Zero, you just need to ensure that you have your GPIO pins soldered on and you need to make a single cable. Now this cable right here, I just made out of some spare cable I had laid around with four wires in it. And what you do is you connect the 5 volt to the 5 volt, the ground to the ground, and you need to take your TX and your RX pins and you need to cross them. So TX connects to RX and RX connects to TX. If you connect TX to TX and RX to RX, it will not communicate. So once your cable's made up, you can connect them and that's all you need to do. Now, when it comes to mounting both of these, you can get pretty creative and mount the Raspberry Pi as close as you want to your controller board. As long as you have proper airflow, this gives you a very tight, convenient package for adding Wi-Fi control to an existing printer. Now, another thing to keep in mind too is since you are communicating over UART, you do wanna try and keep this wire as short as possible just to prevent interference. So now you can see how it's done. Let's go ahead and install this in the printer. So we have my Raspberry Pi Zero here. And I've gone ahead and mounted it to this mount here that I found on Thingiverse a while back. Connecting my cable and we're gonna go ahead and mount it in the printer. 
And then we're gonna take the other end of the connector, ensure we have the right pins in the right order, and we are going to connect it to the TFT header. In this case here, this is my SKR Mini V2 and my Voron V0. So the next step after you go ahead and do the hardware setup for this procedure is go ahead and create your SD card and move on to the software side of things. And the first thing you're gonna to have to do is decide whether you wanna run mainsail or fluid as your clipper interface. Now, when it comes to choosing between mainsail and fluid at this point, I won't recommend either or. It comes down to personal preference. They both pretty much have the same features at this date and time, and they're both constantly adding features as development moves on with both. Honestly, I would just say grab whichever one has the interface you like the most. The installation procedure for both are pretty much the same, so this guide works for both. So in this case here, uh, we are gonna be installing mainsail. And the reason for that is I run mainsail and fluid on different machines. This one is one of my mainsail machines for testing and I'm gonna keep it with mainsail. So you're gonna go ahead and download the latest version. And then once that is done, use Bellana Etcher to install it. And afterwards, uh, the boot directory on the SD card should pop up. Now, if this doesn't show up, you may need to unplug and plug the SD card back in. After that, we're gonna go down to the WPA supplicant section and we're gonna add our Wi-Fi information and ensure you put in your SSID here and your password and ensure that you delete the hashtags in front of it, otherwise it's not going to work. And if you are gonna to attempt to run a webcam, I recommend that you go into the either the mainsail or fluid section here, uh, depending on which one you installed, and you can adjust your webcam settings here. I do highly recommend if you are gonna to attempt to run a webcam that you lower these settings as much as you're okay with. And that is it for creating your SD card. Now we're gonna go ahead and install this in our Raspberry Pi Zero. And we're gonna go ahead and plug it in and connect to it over our home network. Now you should be able to connect to it over your home Wi-Fi at this point. However, you are gonna to have to go ahead and do some configuration through SSH to set up the UART connection before we go any further at this point. So go ahead and launch your terminal of choice. I'm using PuTTY here and connect to your Pi Zero. Now the default login is Pi, and your default password is Raspberry. You can change those if you wish later on. Now once you're logged in, you are gonna have to modify some files through SSH and add some lines to certain things. I will have all these steps below in the description. It's mostly just copy pasting and deleting certain things. So the first thing you're gonna have to do is swap the GPIO ports from Bluetooth use so that they can be used for UART. So it's a pseudo nano boot. And then you're gonna scroll all the way to the very end of this. You're gonna add the DT overlay line. So copy it, and then you can just hit right click to input it. And then you hit Control X to exit, and then Y to save, and then hit enter. And the next thing is you need to disable the serial console. So that's another pseudo command. And what you're gonna to have to do is there's a section here called console equals serial 10 comma um, 115 200. You're gonna delete that whole section right here. So just basically start hitting delete. And there you go, that's it. Control X, hit Y, and enter. Next, we're gonna to have to go into the Raspberry Config section and change some stuff there as well. So go down to Interface Options, P6, that's Serial Port, select No, and for would you like the Serial Port hardware to be enabled, you hit Yes. At this point, you can also change any other settings you wish to change, then you finish, and then it will reboot the Pi. And now after rebooting the Raspberry Pi, you are gonna have to make a new config file. Now there is a guide here for making the config file on the Clipper website, and we'll just follow that here. You're gonna have to go with the instructions for your specific board though. For reference, this is a SKR Mini V2. And it is mostly just copy and pasting commands. Make menu config. Now to ensure you are making it with the right settings, go to the Clipper GitHub search for the config for your specific controller board and there should be a description at the top here that says what settings you need to have selected when you're making your make config file. And one thing you have to do now, this is regardless of which board you're using, you have to disable 
use USB for communication because we're no longer using USB for communication, we're using UART. You may need to adjust your serial port as well, in this case UART 2, then hit Q to quit, hit Y to save, and then make. Now, because this is an SKR board here, I am gonna have to pull the make file off of the Raspberry Pi. I'm gonna use WinSCP to do that. And then I have to rename it to firmware.bin, put it on the SD card that goes into the SKR Mini, and then plug that back into the board and reset it. and it's pie and raspberry. Okay, let's go to clipper file, go to out, and then right here, clipper bin. This is the file you're gonna to need to pull off of it, and you're gonna to wanna to rename that to firmware.bin, lowercase. Then you're gonna take your SD card out of your SKR. You're gonna plug it into your computer, you're gonna delete the file that says firmware, and you're gonna copy the firmware bin onto it. And then you're gonna go ahead and plug the micro SD card back into the SKR board. An LED might blink for a little bit. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. And then what you can do to check is by plugging the SD card back into your computer. If the firmware.bin is now simply called firmware, all in capital letters, you successfully flashed your board. And there we go, now we have the board flashed. Now we can go ahead and upload our configuration to the printer. Now I already had a configuration set up for this printer, so I'm just gonna go ahead and re-upload that. Now if this is a new build, you are gonna have to go ahead and set up your configuration uh, for your new printer. That is a separate video. Now we have our configuration uploaded. Now under your serial connection, before where you would normally see the USB address, you're gonna try and use slash dev slash TTY AMAO. I'll have that in the description as well. And this would be the most common serial address when connecting over UART, so this should be the one that works. So once you have that inputted there, save and restart. And there we go. Now, depending on the version of Clipper you're upgrading from, uh, if this is a new build or install, you might have some random errors thrown up. But as you can see here, we are connected to the printer and the printer homes just fine because this is a config that we had previously used. And there you have it. That's how you set up a Raspberry Pi Zero over a UART connection to control your 3D printer and also run off your printer's controller board. Now I do actually have this setup functional in my Voron V0 printer. I also use the same setup in my Bonsai printer. Now another thing to keep in mind is controlling your MCU over UART can be advantageous on the larger size Raspberry Pi. Now I have this Raspberry Pi 3A here, and it only comes with a single USB port. Now, of course I could use a USB splitter, so I could connect this to my printer's controller board over UART, and then leave the available USB port for a webcam, for example. The only difference that you have to be aware of is you simply don't connect the five volt signal, just the ground, the TX, and the RX pins. And other than that, the setup method is the same. So I hope you found this video informative. If you do have any questions, as always, ask them in the comments below. If you like the video, make sure you like that smash button. And if you want to see more content such as this, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. If you like the content I produce and you would like to help support the channel, there are options below in the description as well. I hope you learned something new. And as always, thank you and have a nice day.